So, okay, uh, we will go, we will start with chapter one. Okay, introduction to pneumatic. Okay, so this lecture note is prepared by Inchi Shari. So I bagi credit ke dia. Okay, so the previous lecturer. Okay, and uh, so I will be giving lecture on on this subject. Okay, so chapter one, introduction to pneumatic. So one of the important chapters. So bab dekat sini baru kita akan belajar. So what is actually pneumatic? So what is actually hydraulic? So uh, today we will see what is pneumatic. Okay, introduction to transmission power system. Okay, so basically we have uh, three methods of transmitting power. Okay, uh, for any power lah. So if you power is actually the ability to do work. So whatever work you want to do. Okay, so daily life. So you want to move one one thing from one place to another place. So I think uh, in the industrial talk, kita ada tengok. So uh, if you want to design a DC motor, so uh, there, there are bending involved, so inserting, so semua itu adalah work. So if you want to do some work, you need to have power. Uh, even our human body, so we need power to do some work. Uh, kalau you tamakan, tak ada tenaga. Then uh, you tak boleh concentrate on doing work. So similarly, so... Uh, whatever things that uh, transmitting power, so the, uh, the Kasini is mentioned, there are three uh, three ways, three methods of transmitting power. First, adalah mechanical. So mechanical, apa tu mechanical? Apa tu mechanical? So mechanical, it can be anything. So it can be gear. So dalam kereta ada gear kan? Uh, so gear bergerak, so kereta pun jadi uh, bergerak so at different speed so that is uh, something related to mechanical okay so even our human body pun so it can involve mechanical okay so kita ada our a degree of freedom uh, so yang ni berkaitan dengan mechanical then we have electrical so electrical can be so whatever things powered by electrical macam motor so kalau motor tu di connected to electrical So you can have electrical power to uh, move uh, something. Uh, so hari ini kita akan tengok one uh, additional stuff yang kita panggil as fluid power. Okay, fluid power, fluid adalah benda lain. Okay, so fluid it can be uh, gas ataupun liquid. So ada dua jenis. So, I think this one kita dah tengok dalam thermo fluid. So, fluid have uh, two types. One is liquid, one is gas. So, kalau dia berkaitan dengan gas, itu adalah pneumatic. Kalau dia berkaitan dengan liquid, itu adalah hydraulic. So, that's the two different thing. Okay. So, dekat sini, bawah ni ada pneumatic and also hydraulic. So, in practice, most application actually use the combination of three methods to achieve the most efficient overall system. Uh, so, apa yang uh, baris ni dia bagi tahu? So if you want to have an efficient system Okay, pada pendapat you Apa yang you classify as efficient system? So efficient system, apa tu? Efficient system Yeah? Not losing power Ah ha, betul So you nak buat sesuatu kerja Tapi you tak nak bazirkan energy So you don't want to uh, lose power Okay, so you want to run it for long term. So itu adalah matlamat kita. So that's the aim, general aim. So if you want to have an efficient overall system, you tabli rely on one thing. So you tabli rely on only fluid. So you cannot only rely on mechanical. So you only cannot rely on electrical. Macam kalau you only rely on one thing, so kalau tiba-tiba tak ada supply, so electrical supply tak ada. So then you cannot do work. Ah, uh, kan? So, if you want to have an efficient system, you can combine. So, mechanical combined dengan electrical. Ataupun electrical combined dengan uh, fluid. So, sebab itu, electrical combined dengan pneumatic, you dapat electro-pneumatic. So, kalau electrical combined dengan hydraulic, you dapat electro-hydraulic. Uh, so, dia akan uh, enable you to do something more efficiently. Okay, so boleh tengok dekat sini, comparison of power system. So comparison between pneumatic, hydraulic and also electric. Okay, dari segi complexity, pneumatic adalah simple. 
uh, so simple so you just ada alat you sambung dengan compressor uh, so you already can uh, use so it's a simple setup uh, hydraulic dia medium uh, sebab hydraulic selalunya untuk something yang heavy duty uh, macam dekat car workshop so macam mana you boleh angkat kereta uh, so you ada hydraulic uh, dalam lori pun you ada hydraulic bar dia extend so uh, lori yang nak ambil pasir kan so you nak turunkan pasir so you just extend the hydraulic cylinder so dia akan uh, pergi uh, jadi tinggi so uh, pasir akan jatuh so something like that uh, so hydraulic is always uh, something related to medium medium complexity so electric dia either medium or high sebab dia ada banyak precaution yang you kena ambil ok so you boleh tengok some of the uh, characteristic ok so uh, yang very obvious adalah uh, positional accuracy so accuracy untuk pneumatic good walaupun not so accurate tapi dia boleh uh, so it has a reasonable uh, accuracy so hydraulic is actually high high accuracy uh, and electric if you combine uh, will be better uh, so another advantage of pneumatic yang itu adalah fast uh, macam you tengok hari tu kan dalam video uh, so dia boleh buat kerja dengan cepat uh, so uh, is fast pneumatic is fast so hydraulic is very slow and electrical is also fast ok dari segi cost pneumatic low hydraulic is very high ok dari segi maintenance lah ok so whatever things kalau rosak you nak ganti tu dia payah ok so what else so you boleh, boleh baca dan compare ok what some of kalau I go in detail will take a lot of time so kalau you ada apa-apa soalan berkaitan dengan comparison you boleh tanya saya Okay, so introduction of transmission power system. So fluid power is method of using pressurized fluid to transmit energy. Okay, so kalau uh, pressurized fluid dal dalam uh, tadi fluid tu apa? So ada dua jenis. Satu adalah liquid, satu lagi adalah gas. So gas kalau uh, not pressurized macam udara di kasih ni lah, it's not pressurized. Tapi kalau you you letak dalam satu satu bekas so then you pressurize macam tong gas so you pressurize then you boleh gunakan untuk buat uh, a lot of things uh, sebab itu fluid power adalah use, method of using pressurized fluid to transmit energy so when you pressurize something so automatically dalam tu dia ada pergerakan uh, molekul pergerakan zarah ok so then uh, you can use it to generate new power ok so liquid or gas is re referred as fluid accordingly there are two branches of fluid power pneumatic and also hydraulic ok so ada dua jenis uh, so tadi saya beritahu pneumatic ni dia berkaitan dengan apa ok gas ok hydraulic uh, liquid so hydraulic uh, liquid ok so dalam kereta pun ada banyak hydraulic part ok especially macam brake Uh, brake pun is actually hydraulic sebab so, dalam dalam uh, dalam kereta you ada brake fluid kan so brake fluid adalah actually minyak minyak brake so so dia berkaitan dengan hydraulic sebab so, itu you just tekan sikit so kereta you berhenti walaupun kereta you bergerak at uh, 200 km per hour pun dia still boleh berhenti ok sebab so, dia gunakan konsep pascal slow ok kalau you boleh relate dengan temur lah tak relate pun tak apa kalau dah lupa ok so hydraulic system use liquid uh, to transfer uh, transfer force from one point to another point and pneumatic system digunakan air so kalau you nak more accurate compress air ataupun pressurize air kalau air adalah udara udara yang ada di keliling so it's not pressurized ok so kalau dalam exam kalau saya tanya So define pneumatic system. Uh, so pastikan you gunakan jangan letak air tapi gunakan uh, term compressed air ataupun pressurized air. Okay, it's more accurate. Okay. 
So air is compressible. So udara kita boleh mampat. Okay, uh, so we can compress. Uh, okay, but liquid is incompressible. So kalau boleh compress pun maybe sikit. So it's not a lot. Uh, tapi we assume that as liquid cannot be compressed. Uh, tapi air can be compressed. Okay, definition and principle. So, what are the principle behind uh, pneumatic? Okay, so pneuma. Pneuma means is breath, bernafas. Okay, ini adalah Greek term. Okay, dari Greek apa? Yunani, ya. Yeah. Okay, so it's a term Yunani. Okay, so pneuma maksudnya adalah nafas. Then matic maksudnya adalah power. Uh, so, kalau you com combine... So, term pneumatic adalah uh, power using uh, air. Okay. Uh, ataupun dengan nafas lah. Uh, kalau direct translation. So, the term pneumatics describe the use of compressed air in drive and control engineering. Okay. So, one one thing that you need to really understand. Pneumatic, you gunakan compressed air. So, when uh, air is compressed, so it can generate power ok the introduction of pneumatic into mecha mechanization and automation began in mid middle of 20th century ok so dia bermula dari tahun 1950an lah ok when the industrial revolution 3.0 start ok orang dah so, sebab sebelum tu we use a human power so after that industrial 3.0 we already start using machine uh, dekat, dekat company pun ada, ada, ada banyak machine ok so that's what we call as a automation so, sekarang industrial 4.0 so we have a more advanced system ok so but pneumatic and hydraulic still relevant ok sebab still banyak digunakan ok so pneumatic so we will see uh, some on the pneumatic so, ok kalau you tengok most of this slide is actually uh, emphasizing uh, almost the same thing ok so that you will really understand ok pneumatic is an application of compressed air uh, ini adalah term yang uh, definition yang lagi complete so pneumatic is an application ok so it's an application Ex application maksudnya something yang you bought ok at the end so you want to do some work so it's an application of compressed air ataupun pressurized air to power machine or control or regulate machine Ok, so you want to use this power to run a machine Ataupun buat sesuatu kerja Ok, maybe defined as branch of engineering science Which deals with the study of behavior and application of compress compressed air Ok, so pneumatic berkaitan dengan compressed air Can also be defined as a branch of fluid power technology That deals with generation, transmission and control of power using pressurized air Ok, so Kita dah tahu Pneumatic ni digunakan uh, pressurized air ataupun compressed air. Tapi macam mana nak dapat compressed air? So how you want to get the compressed air? Okay, siapa boleh try? Siapa nak try? Macam mana nak generate compressed air ni? Okay, first sebelum you nak compressed air, so you kena dapatkan udara dulu kan? So udara dapat dari mana? surrounding so we have abundance of air in our surrounding so you kena tangkap sikit letak dalam satu tempat compress okay. so that's a, some, kalau kita nak cakap dalam limen term so udara ada uh, udara memang dah ada so you need to have a mechanism to trap the air in one place then you compress it uh, macam tung gas lah tung gas pun tung ada Udara ada So macam mana nak letak udara dalam tu So you need to have some mechanism So sebab itu kita kena gunakan konsep High pressure dengan low pressure Ok udara bergerak dari Mana ke mana I, I to low Ok So I to low So you need to create uh, uh, Inside the tong Dalam tong tu Kena low pressure Outside memang you tak boleh control lah Dia kena jadi I So automatically udara dari luar Dia akan masuk ke dalam Ok, selepas dah masuk tu, you compress Ok, that's how Ok, so 
this fluid power uh, yang gunakan compressed air so dia melibatkan generation macam mana you nak generate that uh, particular compressed air ok transmission ok you dah save uh, macam tone gas ok so you ada tone gas kemudian ada stove ok dapur uh, dapur kan so stove electrical stove ke ataupun gas stove so macam mana you nak trans, transmit that, uh, dari tone gas ke dapur ke uh, your stove you gunakan apa ya yeah? wire oh ni bukan induction cooker ok so gas normal normal gas stove so apa yang you akan gunakan uh, you ada macam pipe kan so kita panggil as hose ok so dari tong gas so you nak transfer the compressed air to your stove you kena gunakan hose ok itu yang kita panggil as transmission ok dengan control control so dekat stove you ada control knob kan Uh, you nak api dia besar ke ataupun kecil you control so that is what we call as a control uh, so semua ni dia berkaitan dengan pressurized air ok so that that's uh, generally about pneumatic ok gas in a pneumatic system behave like a spring since it is compressible uh, so udara ni dia ada flexibility you boleh mampat uh, sekecil yang boleh uh, sebab dia dalam tu zara Uh, the the atoms can be or molecule can be really compressible so that's one advantage lah ok so we will see some example ok real life example ok so ini you tengok uh, I tak tahu lah you all still gunakan uh, yang ni ke tak so sekarang kita just pergi ke apa station station minyak terus pump kan Uh, tapi dulu ada Macam silinder You kena tekan You all pernah guna tak? Pernah? Tak pernah? Tahu tak apa tu basikal? Tahu kan? Uh, so tapi Macam mana you akan pump? You, you, tak pernah tengok? Yang you kena let, Tekan dengan kaki Kemudian kena pump So maybe you all Apa? Generation Uh, generation, new generation lah tapi, tapi kalau pernah tengok tu so maybe you boleh tengok uh, benda ni, so it's actually it's uh, connected uh, to your ni apa uh, connected to the wheel ataupun the tire then uh, because ni ada cylinder, so cylinder tu either manually operated ataupun uh, it can be electrical or uh, some, something else operated lah macam dekat kedai-kedai uh, basikal ataupun kedai motor so uh, it is uh, electrically operated ok so air brakes or locomotive or large truck contribute greatly to the safety of railroad and truck transportation uh, selalunya kita akan gunakan uh, transportation ok so like how I say dalam kereta so dalam kereta pun kita ada brake so ada tiga Siapa biasa gunakan three pedal? Three pedal, siapa? Manual, manual. Manual car. Uh, biasa lah. Okay, so two pedal, I think ramai lah. So I think uh, now kita pun ada so two types of license. So one is for auto, one is for all. Okay. So either way lah. So you will at least akan gunakan dua pedal. Okay. Ada yang guna satu pedal tak? Satu pedal tu macam basikal budak kecil kan Ok So at least you will have two pedal So apa-apa yang you gunakan pedal Is actually manually control So manually control So belakang tu ada minyak So maybe it's uh, related to hydraulic Ok Tapi sekarang macam continental car Dia gunakan Instead of gunakan hydraulic Dia gunakan air So gunakan vacuum uh, Vacuum uh, So Uh, it can be pneumatic also ok so ini some application so other application area yang kita selalunya gunakan pneumatic or hydraulic so so one good thing it can be found in almost all the field of engineering so kalau you belajar subjek ni sebab tu subjek thermofluid subjek pneumatic hydraulic uh, so, 
subjek ni adalah penting for you to understand because of uh, this term almost in all field of engineering ada yang belajar mechatronic engineer uh, engineering tapi tak nak jadi mechatronic engineer ada tak oh, ada anyone ada yang macam duduk hari ni belajar engineering dah grad tak nak kerja sebagai jurutera ada tak tak ada kan i think mostly kalau ada pun maybe you want to venture to business ataupun you ada other, other staff lah tapi i think 95% akan jadi engineer okay either you become engineer ataupun jadi tutor macam saya but you will be in the engineering field okay so you tak tak boleh lari dari all this field either industry ke industry i think most of you will end up there lah infineon ke ataupun intel ke i think most of your engineers are there okay rail transport okay rail transport i think mostly now it's already automated Uh, so you tak pernah tak perlu gunakan arang untuk gerakan uh, lokomotif kan so i think it's already mostly electrical but you still need to know the knowledge uh, kalau you nak buat control system untuk railway pun perlu ada then motor vehicle shipping construction trade air transport mining medicine defense okay all, almost all the field uh, you are can think of hydraulic and pneumatic Okay, so you cannot escape from that. Okay, so application area, ah, boleh tengok lah. Dekat sini application area. So, kalau dia melibatkan linear. Linear, apa tu linear? Linear just bergerak in straight line. Okay, straight line. It's not rotational lah. So, rotational adalah rotational motion. So, rotational can be your wheel. Okay, pusing. Uh, berputar kan? So linear adalah pergerakan uh, in one way One way or two ways Okay but it's a uh, straight uh, Straight macam clamping, feeding, lifting Lowering, opening, closing So pneumatic press Okay trans uh, transfer table, tool loading, industrial robot uh, Kalau you pergi ke industri You akan tengok industrial robot So industrial robot will be there Okay hari tu pun kita tengok dalam video Mini beer ada industrial robot ok, kalau ada peluang kita akan tengok lah bulan 4 ni ok, the real oh, kita dalam lab pun ada ha, industrial robot kita ada yang besar ok, so, tapi you all ada belajar tak? robotik stand on the pan kot ha, so you akan tengok dalam lab, lab robotik ok, so industrial robot ok, selalunya pick and place lah ha So dia akan ambil barang dari satu tempat Letak dekat satu lagi tempat uh, So it can be even small small thing Ataupun big thing macam car Car assembly uh, Dia pun guna juga industrial robot Okay so depends So, so you you as an engineer You cannot miss out all this uh, You memang akan kena dekat uh, one place uh, So nanti tiba-tiba jadi pneumatic engineer uh, So you kena design the circuit So you kena run, trial and run Okay, then generation of rotary motion screwdriver Okay, yang ni pneumatic screwdriver So kalau you tengok dekat bengkel, bengkel kereta Dia selalu gunakan yang uh, Dia tak gunakan yang normal electrical Dia gunakan yang ada udara So that is uh, actually uh, pneumatic screwdrivers Ada grinders, uh, ada thread cutters, drill and etc Uh, application of control, sequence controlling Sequence controlling macam traffic light Okay So mula-mula uh, hijau Kemudian uh, kuning Dia ada sequence uh, So you nak buat sequence control pun boleh Gunakan hydraulic circuit dengan pneumatic circuit Okay So you akan belajar lah You will get more familiarized When you deal with the software uh, Okay others workshop as uh, Paint spraying Ha, sekarang nak cat kereta pun Bukan cat macam ni Dia guna spray Okay very even So it's actually uh, from pneumatic ha, From pneumatic Okay so we will see the characteristic of air Okay uh, yang ni dia sedikit I think mostly you all already know Okay in turbo fluid Okay so characteristic of air is It's a minimal cohesion force 
the forces between the air molecules are to be disregarded for opening operating condition usual in pneumatic in common with all gas air has no particular shape uh, so maksudnya so air can be compressible sebab uh, apa daya tarikan antara molekul dia adalah lemah okay so you can compress okay so air is a mixture of different gases i think 78% of the gas uh, the surrounding adalah nitrogen okay 21% oxygen then ada ada gas gas lain lah okay for practical application within normal temperature and op- pressure range air is considered as an ideal gas and the equation of state for gas can be applied so i think you are familiar with this term ideal gas equation of state ingat lagi tak okay siapa boleh bagi definition ideal gas okay sudah lupa ha ah, okay So 7 Disember dah dah flash. So, <laughs> totally totally dah tak ingat dah. Okay, ideal gas and equation of the So it just for your understanding. So I takkan tanya dalam exam. Okay? Ah uh, tapi uh, since we are dealing with air, so air we consider as the ideal gas and uh, since ideal gas kita akan gunakan equation of state. Apa tu equation of state? PV equals to PV equals to MRT Equation dia lah Kalau you still ingat Okay Okay compress air fundamental Kita tengok sikit pasal compress air Okay compress air ataupun pressurized air Compress atmospheric air Which stores energy in its compressed state uh, Usually greater than at the atmosphere And has a potential to perform work Okay so to simplify this So when you compress air So you letak dekat satu tempat So you It has the potential to perform work uh, You nak buat Macam tadi kita tengok ada drilling work So you want to use a pneumatic system Connected to drill uh, Then you boleh gunakan uh, Compressor tadi Untuk buat uh, kerja Okay so Among the simplest way that air can be taken From the atmosphere and compressed Within a smaller volume Is through the use of end pump Ha, ini yang saya bagi tahu tadi, end pump Biasa tengok tak yang ni? Biasa kan? So, air, end pump so, Untuk pump angin ha, Dekat basikal Okay, motor pun boleh Okay, so end pump So, you tengok dekat sini So, the bar in, inside Dia ada macam satu volume Where you can place your compressor air So, kalau you tarik uh, End pump ke atas So, volume akan besar Udara akan masuk Then you compress You compress Udara akan Pergi ke Tube Okay So that is how uh, Simple uh, So how The simplest way You can take air From the atmosphere Compress it And You do work Okay So uh, Yang ni I dah explain tadi uh, Yang ni Macam mana uh, You boleh baca lah So what, whatever I explained tadi So dia ada dekat sini Okay so compressed air fundamental Okay hari ni kita just belajar Some on fundamental Okay gauge pressure So gauge pressure adalah uh, Pressure yang you boleh ukur So whatever gauge adalah Alat pengukur So normally you can measure something So you do start from zero uh, So kalau pressure increase So dia akan increase lah Okay So pressure measuring device So uh, apa-apa yang you gunakan untuk ukur pressure Is normally measure the difference Between the applied pressure and atmospheric pressure So ini adalah formula dia lah So absolute pressure adalah gauge pressure Plus atmospheric pressure So atmospheric pressure uh, I think you all familiar with that So ikut tempat uh, Kalau dia sea level atmospheric pressure dia lain Atas bukit atmospheric pressure dia lain Okay, so apa yang kalau you nak dapat absolute pressure, you kena tambah that uh, measuring pressure dengan the surrounding pressure. Okay, so that's uh, what we are saying lah. Okay, since new, uh, ini adalah important point. Okay, important point. Since pneumatics are mainly concerned with gauge pressure less than 10 bar, the difference between absolute and gauge pressure can be significant. 
Ha, so pneumatic ni dia melibatkan pressure operating pressure maximum adalah 10 bar. Okay, so maximum uh, that we can use a uh, pneumatic uh, is uh, for 10 bar application. Uh, maksudnya 10 bar ni berapa banyak? It's actually very less. Uh, sebab tu pneumatic kita gunakan untuk uh, buat kerja yang kecil dalam industri. Uh, so macam DC motor benda yang kecil. So we will use pneumatic uh, to do work uh, to all this application. Okay, so uh, pneumatic is uh, dealing with less than 10 bar. Okay, so the difference between absolute and grid pressure are, are significant. So maksudnya, even small uh, changes, uh, small changes dalam pressure, uh, kita kita kena kena ambil perhatian lah. So it is significant. Okay, so pressure measuring device. Nah, so selalunya macam ni lah. Uh, so I think you biasa tengok benda ni. So normally attached to any meters. Uh, kita selalu panggil yang ni meter lah. So it's actually pressure gauge. Uh, so nama yang more specific adalah pressure gauge. Uh, kalau dia uh, di connected to vacuum adalah vacuum gauge. Okay. So ada tiga jenis standard model. Adalah Borden Tube Pressure Gauge Diaphragm Pressure Gauge And Piston Spring Pressure Gauge uh, So ini adalah Borden Tube Ok, so Borden Tube uh, So apa yang akan jadi So pressure enter dekat sini uh, So yang ni dia akan Akan mengembang So kalau uh, yang ni Dia connected to the gear uh, So kalau dia ni dia pergi Naik ke atas Uh, yang ni dia akan turun ke bawah uh, Then yang ni dia akan naik ke atas Sebab dia connected to the gear uh, So ini adalah Borden uh, So ada dua jenis lagi Okay so I think uh, maybe we take five Then we will continue With another few more slides Okay, so we have few more slides to go. So we'll try to finish it. Okay, so compressed air. Okay, we are learning about compressed air fundamental. Okay, so as I say, we are using perfect gas principle ataupun ideal gas. Okay, so there are three laws that uh, we usually will apply. Okay, first is the Boyle's law. Okay, so Boyle's law boleh tengok dekat sini. So P1, V1 equals to P2, V2 equals to constant. Okay. Uh, then we have a Charles law. Okay, V1 over V2 equals to T1 over T2 equals to constant. And we have a Morton's law. Uh, state the pressure. Okay, so yang ni P1 over P2 equals to T1 over T2 equals to constant. Okay, so uh, so these are th three types of laws that we usually we will use okay, in our calculations. Okay, uh, when it's uh, dealing with idle idle gas. Okay, just just for your understanding lah. So uh, no calculation on this side. Okay, but uh, I just want to st state that so compressed air are related to all these uh, laws. So about dalam engineering. Uh, whatever things that you need to do So we You need to uh, Refer to a law uh, Kita tak boleh buat Satu assumption uh, Simply So even you want to do Any assumption It must be related to some laws Okay 
macam undang-undang dekat Malaysia lah so you cannot do something ikut your own ni kan tak boleh ikut sesuka hati so kita memang ada satu perlembagaan kita ada kita ada laws undang-undang so we need to follow especially in uh, traffic uh, katakan dalam traffic you nak you nak memandu you want to drive so you must uh, comply to the laws available uh, so you tak boleh buat sesuka hati so in uh, compressed air in pneumatic so we have uh, these three laws okay so boyle's law charles law and also morton's law okay so compressed air in motion so when the compressed air is a uh, moving uh, yang ni something that you are familiar with law of conservation of mass ataupun continuity equation okay so kita tahu so continuity equation adalah untuk dynamic fluid so when the fluid is in motion so kalau Uh, the compressor is in motion so kita gunakan uh, continuity equation so rho 1 v1 a1 equals to rho 2 v2 a2 equals to constant ataupun uh, mass flow rate uh, and we also apply it together with the Bernoulli equation ok loss of Bernoulli so ini adalah Bernoulli equation uh, so uh, it's uh, related to the compressor ok so types of flow So types of flow, uh, laminar flow and also turbulent flow. So perbezaan dia. Okay, so line is uh, biasa keluar dalam exam. Okay, so uh, maybe you should know lah. Okay, laminar flow adalah flow in that particular direction. So un uninterrupted. Okay, so laminar flow occurs when the fluid flow in parallel layers. So kalau you tengok, dia flow in one direction in parallel layers. Ada lima layer. So dia akan dia akan bergerak dalam same layer. Okay. So with no disruption between the layers. So dia takkan campur dah already. Uh, first layer dia takkan pergi ke second layer. So uh, is a constant. Okay in order. Okay and all particles moving in straight lines parallel to the pipe wall. So kalau you gunakan hose ataupun pipe. Dia akan parallel dengan the pipe, uh, pipe uh, wall. Okay, so that is what we call as a laminar flow. Then we have a turbulent flow. Turbulent flow, kalau you boleh tengok dekat sini. So, so molecule dia bergerak dalam putaran. So, inside the, in, still dalam pipe, tapi dia tak ada order. So, dia tak ada dalam parallel. So, it's uh, moving uh, according to its own need. Okay, so it's opposite to the laminar flow, which occurs in highly velocity, higher velocity, where small packets of fluid particles form uh, leading to lateral mixing so it's mixing so dia akan macam campur-campur so example so, I think example yang something familiar for you smoke rising from a cigarette uh, kalau yang merokok tu so kalau youtube mula-mula dia laminar after some time dia jadi turbulent dia campur uh, you pun tak boleh tengok so you nak buat bubble ke you nak buat apa bulat ke so it's up to you But it's after some time, it will become ah huh, ada wish ya. Eh? <laughs> ah, so wish tu maksudnya you buat lah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So, kita boleh tengok for first few first few centimeters, the flow re remains laminar. Then after some time, dia jadi unstable, unstable and uh, turbulent, turbulent uh, occurs. Okay, so ini adalah dua bentuk. So dalam compressor, in pneumatic pun ada benda ni. So as long as it within the uh, hose ataupun pipe, dia akan jadi laminar. So kalau ada any bocor ke apa, dia akan jadi turbulent after some time. Okay, so you need to understand that. Okay, then uh, we also uh, involve, since we are compressing the air, so kita ada pressurized so pressurize in uh, one uh, particular container so ada tendency untuk pressure pressure loss ataupun pressure drop uh, so pressure drop dalam pneumatic adalah something yang very serious that you always need to take it. sebab dia akan rosakkan your machine tiba-tiba dia gerak dengan uh, that particular uh, particular pressure tiba-tiba pressure drop uh, dan machine tu dia akan jadi jam lah Uh, so you need to have a maintenance so maintenance kalau you kerja dekat industri you cause the pressure drop so you need to pay from your pocket lah kan okay. uh, sebab so you cause a loss to the company 
So you as an engineer, you must know uh, how to identify whether there is a pressure drop. So as much as possible, you prevent the pre pressure drop, uh, unnecessary pressure drop. Uh, ataupun you gunakan the proper mechanism. So I thought you can design circuit nanti. So you make sure all the pressure regulating, uh, you akan tengok lah pressure regulator valve, the pressure limiting valve. So semua itu akan bantu you untuk design uh, circuit which will handle this pressure drop. Okay. So maybe sekarang tak nampak lah. Tapi this all, uh, I'm telling uh, the fundamentals related to pneumatic. Okay, pressure drop is a term used to describe the decrease in pressure from one point in a pipe or tube to another point downstream. Okay, downstream maksudnya dari tinggi dia jadi rendah. So, that's what we call as a drop. So, pressure drop is a result of friction force on the fluid as it flows through the tube. Okay, okay maybe one particular part of the tube, dia ada karat. Uh, so, maybe it, it will cause uh, either for the pressure to suddenly increase or suddenly drop. Okay, so it can be because of the frictional force. So, the main factors impacting the resistance in fluid or air flow is uh, flow with velocity through the pipe. Uh, so, resistance lah, resistance of the fluid. Okay, so the fluid, uh, it can be compressed air ataupun oil. So, Uh, what will impact the resistance dalam tu adalah flow velocity so kalau velocity tinggi so it can overcome the friction uh, ataupun resistance kemudian fluid, fluid uh, viscosity uh, fluid viscosity adalah kelikatan so kelikatan pun plays a very big role uh, sebab tu kita selalu buat uh, maintenance untuk kereta uh, kalau you gunakan motor pun minyak hitam kena tukar Uh, so whether you are travelling after 6 months uh, dia viscosity akan kurang uh, so kalau viscosity kurang you macam dalam engine you letak air lah uh, air viscosity rendah kan compare dengan minyak so what will happen if your engine run with water uh, habis lah hancur kan kan so wear and tear so many problem will occur so why tu you kena buat maintenance Even you are using car or motorcycle, motorcycle uh, you need to do maintenance after some time. Okay, maintenance, uh, you cannot disregard. You check, jangan check up, oh, do, after 2 tahun, waktu ada duit, sebaru saya buat. Uh, so, 2 tahun tu je yang you boleh guna motor tu. Lepas tu, you kena tukar. So, it will cause more, more problem, more cost. Okay? So, fluid viscosity and surface roughness. Okay, surface of the O's. Uh, so uh, it will impact the resistance and type of flow so whether it's a lamina so normally kalau dia lamina uh, dia tak ada friction lah dia smooth so kalau tiba-tiba dalam tu ada ada turbulent tiba-tiba uh, ada some leakage or what so it will disturb the flow and uh, it will cause a resistance it will impact the resistance of the fluid okay so uh, all these are related to pressure loss and also pressure drop Okay, choice of working medium and system. Okay, choice of working medium maksudnya, so where you want to apply pneumatic, uh, ke mana you nak apply hydraulic. Okay, based on apa yang you belajar dalam 19 slide ni, where you want to apply pneumatic, dekat mana? Hmm. Kalau tak boleh jawab, saya tanya dalam exam. Based on your understanding, pneumatic Tadi kita ada tengok kan So, dekat mana Pada pendapat you uh, You boleh apply pneumatic Dekat mana you boleh apply hydraulic yeah? Lifting uh, So, pakai pneumatic ke hydraulic Hydraulic uh, So, lifting uh, So, benda yang berat So, benda yang berat Perlukan more force sebab force pun, uh, untuk lifting pun you perlukan force untuk angkat. So, pneumatic tadi kita tengok berapa? Berapa bar maksimum? 10 bar. So, 10 bar uh, actually very very less lah. Uh, 10, kalau uh, in comparison, kalau you nak lift a car, you perlukan maybe dalam uh, 700 bars. Uh, 700 bars dengan 10 bar. Uh, tengok uh, difference. 
So you tak boleh gunakan uh, uh, pneumatic cylinder untuk angkat kereta. Tayar pun tak boleh angkat. Kan? Uh, so tayar pun tak boleh angkat. So you nak angkat kereta tu so lagi sesuai kalau you gunakan hydraulic. So dekat industri you as an engineer you will suggest to the company. Okay, so I think our application is to deal with DC motor. Uh, so DC motor jangan pergi guna hydraulic. Uh, so I think uh, based on my understanding, so based on the calculation apa yang you buat dengan Boyle's law, apa Charles law semua kan. Uh, apa yang you belajar dan you temu lah. So I tak nak start balik. Uh, nanti you jadi stress kan. Uh, so pressure increase. So pressure increase or pressure drop is not good. Ya. Yeah? Kalau macam air suspension. Air suspension dekat mana? Tu so, you kena tengok air suspension dekat mana. Ah, uh, so bus selalunya kalau air suspension dia selalunya ber, berkaitan dengan pneumatik. Tapi you since bus ni dia something yang besar. Ah, uh, so you kena gabung sikit dengan hydraulic. Ah, uh, you kena gabunglah. Sebab tu tadi saya cakap kan efficient So you boleh apply as suspension guna pneumatic boleh tapi it's not sustainable. You tak boleh guna untuk long term. Uh, sebab when you want to apply in one uh, particular application, so one thing you nak buat dengan efficient. You nak buat kerja you kalau you nak buat A to Z, pastikan apa yang you design tu buat A to Z. Jangan A sampai K terus stop. Uh, lepas tu you kena buat maintenance. So tak mau lah macam tu. Because we want to do long run. Uh, then uh, we also want to see the cost. Uh, so semua benda ni kita kena uh, take into consideration when designing our system. Uh, so designing ini chapter 4 lah. 4 and onwards. Uh, nanti you akan tengok. Nanti saya akan tanya lah. Maybe Encik, uh, Encik Saifuddin akan tanya. Kenapa you letak air regulator valve dekat sini? Uh, so you kena bagi justification lah. Uh, so subjek ni you tak boleh, tu, tak boleh tiru dari kawan Sebab you kena answer uh, So nanti waktu demo tu dia akan tanya Kenapa you letak ni Kenapa you letak komponen ni uh, So you boleh letak lah Thousand one komponen you boleh letak uh, Tapi you kena ada justifikasi Okay So choice of work, working medium and system Macam saya bagi tahu tadi So we have uh, so many system So we have pneumatic system kita ada hydraulic system, kita ada electro pneumatic, electro hydraulic. Uh, it can be so many other stuff lah. You boleh combine. Okay. So you need to choose wisely as an engineer. So for this particular application, system apa yang saya nak guna? Okay. So boleh tengok some example dekat sini. When the system requirement is high speed, medium pressure, usually 6 to 8 bar, and less accuracy of position. Uh, then you boleh gunakan pneumatic Sebab pneumatic ni dia Something yang very fast So dia gunakan udara uh, So udara you, is very fast Hydraulic dia minyak Dia gerak slow uh, my, uh, One of the application uh, Hydraulic auto gate dekat rumah Dia cepat tak? Cepat kereta pun lambung kan? Kenal, kenal dekat kereta Dia slow Slow and steady Hydraulic ni slow and steady Pneumatic ni dia fast Uh, tapi kekurangan pneumatik walaupun dia fast Sebab dia fast Dia not so accurate uh, Tapi hydraulic dia slow and steady So dia accurate So dia ada advantage So if the system requires high speed Medium pressure uh, Dalam 6 to 8 bars So kalau kurang dari 10 bars You still can uh, decide for pneumatic And less accuracy Sebab tu saya cakap Sebab dia fast Dia less accurate Uh, so then you can suggest a pneumatic system So if the system requirement is high pressure uh, Katakan 700 bar ataupun 500 bar And high precision So you know they are accurate uh, A fluid system with oil Fluid system with oil ni apa? Fluid system with oil Hydraulic kan? So hydraulic dia menggunakan oil uh, Cercaya So fluid system and oil is good If it's high pressure and high precision When the power requirement is high like a forging press Forging press So you nak mampatkan uh, Maybe bersi ke apa uh, So forging press uh, Sheet metal press It is impossible to use air system 
Kenapa impossible? Ha, sebab dia punya pressure dia rendah Sebab dia maksimum boleh 10 bar Forging press uh, Selalunya dalam 500 bars uh, Dia perlukan tekanan yang tinggi Sebab you nak Besi tu you nak bengkok kan uh, So you tak boleh guna uh, Dia macam <laughs> Kalau Dia macam gunakan Pistol air untuk tembak <laughs> Untuk padamkan api tau <laughs> So pneumatic Kalau you nak gunakan Every duty application Tapi you nak gunakan pneumatic You macam gunakan pistol air Untuk padamkan api So tak boleh lah Kalau api kecil You boleh padamkan So when it involve When it involve Small pressure Okay So oil hydraulic Is the only choice So air is used Where quick response Of actuator is required So ini adalah Some of the choice of working ok so as I say this subject is an application subject so whatever answer that you will give in your exam ataupun dalam demo so you are responsible to it because you are the designer so you are the person who design ok subject dari semester ini semuanya ke arah industri dah ok so no more the fundamental so lepas dekat thermofluid applied mechanics semua tu dah, dah lepas dah So after this, you can go for the robotics. So you go for more on the hands-on side. So you need to step up lah to take responsibility. So jangan cakap nanti dekat demo. Oh, I don't know sir. I tiru dari kawan saya. So tak nak lah. So memang, memang tendency of you sharing the answer will be there. But you must know what you are copying. So what you are taking from your friend. Okay. Okay, so uh, some of the continuation. Okay, jangan mengamuk. Okay, okay, class akan habis. Okay, so if temperature variation range in the system is large, then the use of air system may run in condensation problem and oil is preferred. Uh, so kalau application you, dia melibatkan different temperature. Dari one point to another point. So tiba-tiba temperature under degrees. So at one point, tiba-tiba drop to 50 degrees. Uh, so kalau ada temperature different, so jangan as much as possible, uh, dia akan cause condensation. Uh, okay, condensation akan berlaku. Uh, so better use oil. Sebab so, uh, nanti you akan tengok hydraulic system, dia ada air bubble uh, suppression lah. Dia ada dia ada satu mechanism untuk keluarkan air bubble dari sistem. Uh, so kalau ada condensation problem So oil system is preferred Sebab dia ada a Mechanism uh, to safeguard the system uh, So ini adalah Continuation lah So if the application requires only a medium pressure And high positional accuracy uh, Then you boleh Gabungkan dengan hydro uh, Hydro pneumatic Gunakan air sikit uh, dengan pneumatic So it's based on you Based on your creativity macam mana you nak design the system uh, Ok So air is a non-explosive uh, Kalau application yang you nak gunakan tu Adalah dekat tempat yang temperature terlalu tinggi uh, So dekat sana you tak boleh gunakan hydraulic Sebab hydraulic digunakan minyak So minyak mudah terbakar uh, So jangan pergi suggest Oh yang ni oh, I, So so Alan aja Kalau less than uh, Uh, 10 bar kena guna hydraulic tiba-tiba application tu dekat uh, dekat apa tempat mudah terbakar dekat petrol petroleum ke uh. so you pergi suggest dekat sana tengok-tengok one old plant meletup sebab you <laughs> uh, so janganlah so you need to be reasonable so you kena assess all the thing before deciding what system you want to use The oil system are pro more prone to fire and electrical hazard and are not recommended in such application. So, uh, the final point, because air contains oxygen about 21% and not sufficient alone to provide adequate lubrication uh, of moving parts and seal, oil is usually introduced in the air system near the actuators to provide the lubrication preventing excessive wear and oxidation. Okay? Uh, hydraulic system one of one more advantage dia uh, you tak perlu letak minyak uh, so kan uh, selalunya kalau you nak kurangkan geseran you letak minyak kan so when you are using hydraulic system 
So hydraulic memang digunakan minyak So you tak perlu letak additional minyak ha, Tapi dalam pneumatik Dia ada satu uh, part Kita panggil as FRL Filter uh, Regulation and Lubrication So dia dalam Dalam compressed air Dia akan introduce sedikit minyak uh, So that Minyak itu dia akan pergi uh, Kurangkan gestiran lah Dia akan pergi apply dekat the particular seal Ataupun particular place uh, So dia akan macam ada berminyak sikit uh, So that the, it will be smooth Okay so that's why they are saying here lah uh, Sebab dia selalunya akan ada oxidation Oxidation uh, which will uh, Cause a lot of uh, arm to the uh, machine Okay so you can see Advantage of pneumatic Okay, soalan yang famous Okay, soalan yang selalunya keluar Okay, state advantage of pneumatic Ataupun compare pneumatic with hydraulic So, soalan-soalan ni biasa akan keluar So, biasa yang you boleh score marks Okay, selalunya kalau tanya 3 point Dia akan bagi 3 marka So, why you want to waste, right? So, I think something very simple Okay, I think most of Mostly I already explained dalam I punya explanation I think you already boleh dapat sedikit gambaran lah Walaupun today is the only first day So I think you already can get uh, uh, The idea Where to use pneumatic, where to use Okay, so advantage of pneumatics I go through sikit Okay, air is available practically everywhere In unlimited quantities Okay So udara perlu bayar tak? Tak perlu kan? Uh, so udara memang ada So it's available in abundance Surround you So you cuma perlu tangkap sikit Compress dan guna uh, So macam tu lah uh, So macam you Tinggal tepi sungai Ada banyak ikan You just kena tangkap je uh, Untuk makan Jangan tangkap semua Nanti semua rosak uh, So it's like that So air is available everywhere Practically uh, is is free Air is free Cuma compression Compression of the gas tu yang you kena spend uh, So ni apa Mineral water company uh, Macam mineral water company lah So mineral, uh, mineral dengan water available everywhere eh. They just tangkap sikit filter Sumbat dalam botol jual dekat you uh, So similar So it's available everywhere Air can be easily transported in pipeline Even over large distance so you boleh boleh compress at one place then you boleh gunakan pipe to transfer to a longer distance few kilometers pun boleh boleh hantar sebab even it leak leak pun uh, doesn't matter dia akan balik ke udara so okay so leakage problem tak ada okay compress air can be stored in a reservoir and remove as required in addition the reservoir can be transportable macam tong gas tadi so you boleh compress and letak dalam satu Tong, then tong tu you boleh bawa dari satu tempat ke satu lagi tempat It's transportable So all these are the advantage of pneumatic So compressor is relatively insensitive to temperature fluctuation This ensure reliable operation even under extreme condition So extreme condition macam uh, kawasan uh, mudah terbakar tadi lah So air is not so concerned about the temperature different Even at 1000 degree Celsius pun they still boleh digunakan Okay, uh, but hydraulic is not So compressed air offers no risk of explosion or fire uh, Ni one of the advantage Sebab dia uh, can withstand uh, higher temperature fluctuation uh, Explosion takkan berlaku lah uh, Ataupun fire So unlabricated exhausted air is clean Okay, so even ada leakage uh, kalau dia escape to the udara pun Tak ada pencemaran uh, Sebab you tak ada Any toxic gas inside kan So no chemical so, You just like tangkap sikit Compress uh, Then you lepas balik So if you are not using So no problem So does not cause contamination Tak berlaku pencemaran So simple construction and relatively inexpensive uh, Sebab uh, in industry uh, di selalunya kalau pressure kurang you gunakan pneumatic so pneumatic normally is less expensive compared dengan hydraulic uh, so kalau maybe one particular component you can buy for 10 dollars tapi hydraulic maybe you need to buy 
for $1,000. Uh, so, perbezaan dia banyak. Uh, and advantage of pneumatic, yang ni one of the common one, very fast working medium and high working speed. Dia cepat, sebab udara. Dia cepat. Uh, so, stamping ke, ataupun moving, semua ni you boleh gunakan, consider pneumatic. Okay, so disadvantage of pneumatic system. So, walaupun advantage banyak, tapi disadvantage ada juga. Okay, suitable only for low pressure and hence low force application. Uh, so, you tak boleh gunakan untuk angkat kereta. Uh, angkat kereta, maybe you kena gunakan 1000 pneumatic cylinder, baru boleh angkat. Uh, tapi yang tu pun not possible lah sebab cost. Uh, so, better you invest on hydraulic system. Uh, so, you only can use so the, if your application is low pressure and low force application, then you boleh gunakan pneumatic. Okay, so compressed air actuators are economically up to 50 kN. So force yang dia boleh ambil itu maybe up to 50 kN. Yang itu pun depends on the type of cylinder. So yang ini kita akan belajar dalam chapter yang akan datang, chapter 3. So uh, actuators. Uh, so one particular setup baru boleh dapat 50 kN kalau tak dia akan kurang so generation of compressor is expensive compared to electricity uh, so you nak tangkap udara tu you nak compress is expensive sebab udara tu limited and is sold for very expensive uh, macam tong gas dekat rumah berapa ringgit? satu tong 30, 40 uh, tapi one month you guna electricity baru bayar 30 ringgit 40 ringgit kan sama lah uh, so yang itu pun you boleh guna untuk kalau continuously you guna uh, gas akan habis uh, sama lah uh, so so generation of compressor is expensive uh, walaupun udara free tapi compression adalah expensive so exhaust air noise is unpleasant and silencer has to be used uh, <coughs> kalau udara yang terlepas uh, terlepas ke uh, udara yang uh, kompres tapi terlepas ke udara itu dia akan keluarkan bunyi so you pernah, kena letak silencer lah uh, so silencer you need to have a suppression ok rigidity of the system is poor uh, so kalau you gunakan kompresor pernah tengok dekat pasang lah tak kompresor uh, dia macam keluarkan bunyi kan you tengok apa generator apa ni kan uh, so dia bergerak dia bergerak ada, ada, ada getaran then you need to have a special setup untuk letak dia dekat satu tempat uh, you kena macam either drill, kalau tak dia akan bergetar nanti tiba-tiba pergi langgar orang kan, getar-getar-getar langgar orang uh, habis kena bayar ok, so air cannot seal the fine gap between the moving part like hydraulic system so hydraulic system tadi saya cakap so, gunakan minyak so you have uh, uh, viscosity uh, viscosity of the of the oil will help to fill the gap, fine gap small small gap dia akan uh, easy, tapi air cannot uh, so less precise ok it's not possible to achieve uniform speed due to compressibility of air, so air uh, yang di supply so maybe dia akan ada fluctuation uh, so walaupun dekat meter ditunjuk 90 katakan 90 uh, tapi it can be uh, at one time 89.7 at times 89.9 so dia ada sedikit fluctuation uh, so you tak boleh dapat uniform speed ok so that's why you can use pneumatic in an application where less accuracy is desired ok so pneumatic system is vulnerable to dirt and contamination so kalau ada bocor so contamination boleh masuk and uh, the dirt can go and uh, spoil your whole system uh, dia pergi sumbat ke kan so that's uh, some of the disadvantage ok so boleh tengok some of the comparison between hydraulic system so hydraulic ni kita akan uh, tengok nantilah uh, sebab so, I think chapter number 6 uh, chapter number 7 kita akan tengok hydraulic uh, tapi generally uh, hydraulic is is opposite to the pneumatic uh, so uh, pneumatic gunakan gas hydraulic gunakan liquid so pneumatic guna dari maximum 10 bar so hydraulic boleh sampai 700 bar 
so any open system closed system okay uh, so leakage uh, pneumatic leakage is okay tapi hydraulic leakage kalau ada ada lubang dekat us so minyak itu akan keluar then uh, tempat itu akan berminyak lah so it will cause accident so orang boleh jatuh kenderaan boleh terbabas ke apa kan so so many complication ok so pneumatic valve easy to operate so hydraulic valve uh, difficult to operate so pneumatic light in weight so hydraulic heavy so normally untuk sebab dia gunakan untuk heavy duty so heavy application so generally is weight lah uh, so air uh, heavy in weight so pneumatic compressor are used ok so dalam pneumatic you gunakan compressor sebab you kena tangkap udara kena compress dulu baru gunakan ataupun you kena gunakan compress air you tak boleh gunakan udara yang ada terus nak apa sambung pipe terus nak guna tak boleh you kena compress dulu ok tapi hydraulic you boleh gunakan pump ha, you dah ada satu tangki minyak dari tangki minyak itu you gunakan pump untuk sedut masuk ke sistem boleh ha. so yang ni you kena tahu ok something that you need to note so kalau ada nota tu uh, so note lah so pneumatic gunakan compressor hydraulic gunakan pump jangan terbalik so jangan cakap pneumatic gunakan pump salah ok walaupun understanding kita macam tu uh, semua pun pump kalau ditangkap dia hantar terus pump uh, so it can be compressor uh, so uh, same hydraulic jangan cakap gunakan compressor so minyak tak boleh compress ok so wrong understanding kalau saya tengok tu saya put minus mark ok so uh, take it uh, so pneumatic free from fire hazard and uh, hydraulic prone to unsafe for fire hazard sebab dia minyak ok uh, pneumatic perlukan special arrangement of uh, lubrication minyak untuk kurangkan wear and tear untuk kurangkan bahagian dia untuk tak jadi aus ok tapi hydraulic since gunakan minyak so it's automatically lubricated tak perlu ada additional minyak ok these are some of the comparison lah ok so ok so yang ni uh, circuit ok so I bagi sedikit introduction for the circuit circuit yang you design nanti akan ada 5 element 5 elements in the circuit that you will design pneumatic circuit lah yang ni bukan electrical circuit so this is totally something new for you uh, so simbol pun lain uh, simbol pun akan lain so simbol pun you kena tahu tapi along the way kalau you rajin gunakan software rajin buat lab rajin buat tutorial nanti uh, so you akan hafal simbol tu so dalam uh, exam you kena lukis you kena design apa yang you lukis dalam fluid sim tu you kena lukis dalam waktu exam uh, so pastikan you buat latihan yang cukup so jangan cakap saya tak bagi tahu. Jangan cakap saya tak bagi tutorial. Okey, jangan cakap saya tak payung. <laughs> Okey, saya memang ada bagi dah material. So video pun saya bagi. Okey. Okey, so quickly, I think last slide. Okey, so element yang ada dalam pneumatic circuit. So it start with air supply and conditioning element. So maksudnya you can ada supply of air, compressed air baru you boleh gunakan kalau udara pun tak tangkap udara pun tak kompres macam mana nak guna kan dia macam you tak bayar bil you ada electrical wire tapi you tak bayar bil elektrik ha, dia macam tu lah so you first akan start dekat air supply and condition conditioning maksudnya the preparation of the compressor so, kalau ada keperluan untuk filter you filter dulu kalau ada keperluan untuk lubricate you lubricate regulate regulate so pastikan air supply to the system is in optimal condition for the operation uh, so ini adalah first element uh, so ini adalah example ada compressor, ada receiver ada pressure regulator, filter, dryer, lubricator so semua ni kita akan tengok dalam chapter 2 ok, so lepas tu kita ada input element so input element macam button uh, so you ada push button uh, so dia ada few types lah ada mechanical operator uh, ataupun manual, manual kalau, kalau manual you tekan button ataupun pedal the foot pedal uh, ada banyak lah so you boleh tengok dekat uh, fluid stream so input element so selalunya input element ni yang akan start the operation you tekan button baru operation tu akan start 
Macam tadi pun saya tekan kan Satu button dia ke bawah Baru dia bergerak Selinder Sama lah So processing element uh, pro So udara yang you dapat So where you want to channel Okay you nak channel sikit dekat actuator Actuator A So one part send to this valve So you akan ada directional control valve Ada ada processing element lah Untuk decide Ataupun uh, logic logic valve Or valve Or selalunya Either one dapat dia terus on uh, Kalau end dia dua-dua kena ada Baru dia akan on Dia macam tu lah Kemudian ada time delay So if you want to introduce time delay So let's say 5 second uh, So you ada set up dia lah Untuk, untuk introduce delay So maksudnya you tekan button uh, Kalau ada you, you ada time delay valve After 5 second baru Your cylinder akan mula bergerak So you can design all that Then you have a control element So directional control valve So yang ni sebelum the actuating So actuating adalah the final So selalunya kita akan start dari bawah So sampai ke atas Actuator ada ke atas Dalam circuit So jangan lukis terbalik So you pun pening, saya pun pening ha, So kalau saya pening, saya tak bagi markah So subjek ni simple je Okay, jangan peningkan saya Jangan peningkan diri sendiri Okay, so final one is actuating device Selalunya kita akan gunakan silinder So motor ni uh, Dalam lab adalah uh, So kita akan gunakan uh, Mostly kita akan gunakan silinder So either it will extend And uh, move back Extend or retract Okay, so ada uh, uh, Ini adalah contoh 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 pneumatic circuit yang you akan design Tengok, di start dari supply element dekat bawah Okay, so you ada compressor, ada FRL unit So supply, dia masuk ke input Dekat sini ada push button Push button 1, push button 2, push button 3 Kemudian ada processing element All valve or end valve uh, Then you ada control element, direction control valve Then you ada double acting cylinder uh, Semua ni ada, de ada dekat uh, Your fluid stream Okay, so balik rumah tu, you try design circuit ni Dalam fluid scene uh, Try to execute So uh, So software tu, you just try and error lah Okay, before your lab Okay, so any question? 10 o'clock Tak ada soalan? Ada? Tak ada? So I hope you understand So today is just an introduction Kita start slow dulu Okay Then uh, we will go along the way lah Okay uh, So the remaining I think we baru complete 25 slide So ada sampai 63 So starting from this uh, Ada 36 minutes video I akan upload dalam Ad Puzzle So it will explain uh, with simulation uh, Yang ni akan bergerak lah So dia akan tunjuk one by one Okay so you just go through Uh, listen first Then uh, next week kita akan ada discussion Okay So okay Kalau tak ada soalan uh, Please off Okay So thank you so much